welcome to Exchange for Media. With me today is a very spirited APAC leader who's leading a relatively young yet dynamic agency. Please welcome Mr. Gordon Domlija, APAC CEO, Wave Baker. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Absolute honor. So, uh, uh, as you know, your, your agency has been doing reasonably well despite pandemic. You know, you're, uh, you recently retained L'Oreal in India, which is a very huge uh, account. You have Mondelez, you have a lot of big accounts in India. Mm. So, you know, if I could ask, how is India contributing to your overall growth, you know, mm -hmm. for the OAPAC region? Of course. Uh, so first, I'm, I'm going to correct you because rather than reasonably, I would say remarkably and, and astonishingly, <laughs> and, and especially given, given the circumstances and the context of where we are, I don't need to go into that. But, you know, I, I think you know, for me, the, the key story here is about uh, resilience and, and about learning and about an attitude and aptitude which focuses on, on people and, and the people that, that deliver truly outstanding work. Um, for, throughout whatever circumstances they find themselves in. So I think, you know, it, it's been a, you know, we, we are a young company and I think that dynamism, as you say, has probably helped us even in this period because we don't really have a lot of set ways of working, set rules and like, you know, set regulations and processes. I think our, a lot of our strength and our, and our um, you know, and our growth over the last couple of years has really been focused on on our ability and our agility to drive um, to drive outcomes, to drive different ideas, different ways of working that, that really resonate with clients as their businesses change, as consumers change, as, as the whole media ecosystem changes. So I think that's that sort of you know put us in a in a strong position you know um, over the last couple of years. I think um, right now, I mean, India you know truly remarkably, given the situation there, has continues to contribute incredibly. I think one of the you know, really fascinating things about what's happening in India is that business really hasn't slowed down at all. It, it feels like business is going full steam ahead in like, you know, the amount of pitching we do. I mean, you know, I read your publication. So, you know, there is a lot of pitching. There is a lot of business out there and there's a lot of people looking for new solutions and looking for new ideas. So I really feel that, um, you know, business hasn't slowed down at all. And so our team and, you know, and, and the whole industry has had to adapt to that. Now, it had to like try and totally change its focus, change its way of working. Like, you know, while, you know, enduring like some of the most incredibly stressful and distressing you know, circumstances outside of their control at the same time. So it, it's been a, you know, it, it's fascinating. And, you know, and it's just, you know, for me, like the incredible spirit that I see from India, it really has come through. Um, and you see the work that has been done um, in, in those circumstances is, is, is truly incredible. Now, I mean, in, in terms of uh, total numbers, I mean, it, India represents about 20% of our business in Asia Pacific. Um, and in terms of the growth that it's contributed, it's contributing still throughout um, the COVID period, it's been contributing ahead of its, ahead of its size. So around 25, 30% of, of our total growth is, is coming from India at the moment. So you mentioned L'Oreal, which is, you know, a, a, you know, a, a huge piece of business, really critical piece of business to us, not just in India, but across the world, um, you know, growing business uh, and one with huge ambition. And, you know, as an agency, you always want to be tied with brands with huge ambition, you know, who challenge you. It's difficult. It's hard. They put you under pressure, but that's the only way you learn. And I think that's the only way you grow as well. So that's been, um, you know, that, that was, that was a, a great result for us. I think if you look at the other retentions uh, around Heinz, Cedars around um, Confetti Van Mal. You know, we, we've you know we've done very well at retaining business, but I would say the other part of what India is contributing is the growth of like new economy business. If you look at you know the amount of startups, the amount of tech companies, you know, in, in, I'm, I'm very used to that living in living in China. You know, this is this has been my reality for some years now. But I'm really seeing India at a, at a cusp of like a, a technological and, and, and digital revolution. So I think, you know, if you look at um, Housejoy, Bumble, Tinder, Matchmoney.com, these are all, you know, different kinds of clients and future facing clients who are asking us to do different things, you know, to, to operate in a very digital ecosystem, to understand performance and really contribute to their business. And, and for us as an agency, there's nothing more important than seeing what we do contribute directly to a client's business. 
I think, you know, historically we may have got away from really how close we were. If you just look at like media performance, it's not a reflection of business performance, but now media is so integral to business performance. And you see how the technology companies are coming to us to actually, you know, work out how we actually operate in, 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 the, in the new world, in the new world of commerce and, and, and retail and acquisition. So I think that's, you know, that, that, that's really, you know, what I'm most proud of like in, in terms of how they've managed to turn that and almost like reshape their business and reshape their profile into e-commerce, into programmatic, into areas which, you know, have, have had to be forcibly, you know, brought up to speed and, and accelerated during this, during this period. You know, while you have done remarkably well, and uh, I've corrected myself, so, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the uh, situation in India for the last two months was very bad. And, uh, yeah. You know, we had that uh, second wave and uh, it was uh, far more damaging than the first one in terms of personal loss and overall sentiment. How much did mm. it impact? Because, uh, you know, it, it has a direct impact on consumer sentiment and, you know, consumption and other issues. So, mm. uh, where how much did it derail your, uh, you know, growth chart? Um, you know, it... I, I think, you know, you have to, when, when you're talking about business, it's very difficult for me to separate out the human element of what has happened with, with the business element, because it's very easy to fall into a trap just talking about business like nothing, like nothing's happening. Because in, in reality, business does go on. You know, all of our clients are still operating, you know, people still own businesses, you know, you're still part of a massive global economy. So you know, things have to keep progressing, you know, despite what is happening at, at, at a human level. So, um, you know, there, there has been, you know, that and, and I, I think what we've been very good at doing is making sure we prioritize the human element through through this period and and the effects that this is having on, on people. We're a people business. I mean, you know, literally we don't we don't make anything, we don't produce anything, we don't have any special powers anywhere other than, than our people and their application, their passion and their and their enthusiasm for what they do. So to me, looking after them has been the, the priority over the over this period. Um, but that said, people have still want to occupy themselves with work. You know, it's been important. If you're in lockdown, if you're not going anywhere, you know, people still want to keep busy and, and keep, you know, and, and feel like they're doing something, achieving something and growing. So, you know, so in reality, what I'd say is it, it hasn't really slowed us down. You know, if, if anything, it's, it's made us think differently about how we work and we, we are doing things very differently. But if you look at, you know, I mean, I'm, call out our, our team in India are just fantastic. And, you know, Ajay as our CEO in, in, in um, South Asia has done a fantastic job in, in unifying uh, the business, in creating a community spirit around the business and, and, and sharing the, the pride and the optimism that they have about the work that they're doing. I mean, you see the work that we do on, I mean, particularly on something like Mondelez, it's, it's outstanding. It's like really second to none anywhere in the world. So, so I'm immensely proud of them and, and immensely proud of what they've achieved and, and immensely proud that they've not really seemed from a business perspective, and like, let me be very clear, from a business perspective, haven't suffered at all. Whereas I, I fully appreciate how, how tough it's been on everyone individually. Um, so that, that's, that's definitely been, you know, um, you know a, a great to see from the team. So, you know, you, you uh, head the entire APAC region and uh, last one and a half years, the entire mm -hmm. I mean, all of us have been affected by COVID, the pandemic situation and some, I mean, India has been one of the worst affected countries. But, you know, uh, in the entire region, which markets have proved to be most resilient to the pandemic? Well, I mean, I, I feel remarkably lucky uh, being based in China. Um, I'm, I'm based in Shanghai. And uh, other than the uh, original uh, outbreak, and then um, some sort of like very sensible, regimented way of getting back to, to a full working environment. Um, we, we haven't been in any sort of lockdown or any sort of um, restriction for well over a year now. So, it, you know, so business here has, uh, has accelerated. I think you see for a lot of global brands, you realize now the importance of, um, of China um, particularly when it comes to luxury brands and luxury consumption. I think, you know, China has, has really, you know, taken uh, the, you know, the, the, the bulk of sales in the world now. You know, it's well over 50% of all luxury sales are, are, are contributed by China. So, so there's a resilience here, but that is circumstantial, I think, as, as much as anything else. And I think what 
that has allowed um, sort of China to do, uh, while the borders are still relatively closed here, even the categories which have been um, most affected, and you know, the, by most affected, I say directly, you know, travel, tourism, you know, those ones that are directly, you know, affected by, you know, uh, by not operating during this period. Um, a huge new industry has, has developed around internal tourism, around like, you know, uh, and, and, and this has more than made up for the, for the gap, you know, and that includes like travel retail, it includes like, all the elements that you'd normally see from a, from a category which has basically disappeared. And, and you know, particularly in China, we had a lot of travel clients with in WaveMaker. And you know, what, what do you do? It was like, you know, so that, that, that hit us quite hard in China last year. But if you now see like how much, uh, how much has been made up and like, you know, people wanting to travel, experience new things and, you know, with, within the borders of what they have, like uh, the, the rebound in, in, in China has been like remarkable like that. And the ability to just create a new economy from the circumstances that they're in. So that, that's, that's definitely been the case. And, and you know, and I, I look, um, I mean, you know, APAC is far, Asia Pacific is far from a homogenous region. Every, you know, and <laughs> as, as you all know, this is very difficult to explain to people who, who haven't spent a lot of time in the region. You know, one country to the next, even one province to the next within individual countries is so different. And like, you know, not just in, in, in uh, language, but in culture and geography and like, you know, in, in outlook, in, in approach to everything. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's been very sort of different across, um, uh, across the whole region. Now, some regions are, or some markets are, are affected very directly. I mean, you know, you look at the contribution of travel and tourism to somewhere like Thailand. You know, that, that you know, if you knock 25% off the GDP of a, of a country, then of course you're going to have a knock-on effect to everything else. It's not just the direct impact, it's the indirect impact of every ancillary business and then just the money in people's pockets. The macro economy, like very quickly, you know, it sort of trickles into the micro economy and, and you can't, you know, so, so spending slows down. So some markets are, are, are genuinely suffering in, in the prolonged sort of period of, of, um, of hardship and, and, and suffering that they see. So where would, where would you place India in this context? And, you know, uh, which uh, APAC market can India look at and, you know, learn uh, certain things and, you know, maybe uh, follow the recovery path? Hmm. I think it, again, separating out, um, you know, the you know where we where we are in terms of the you know the, the human cost and human element of um, of what's happening, and and that recovery. Honestly, that from a business perspective, um, I, I have really seen India accelerate. I think they they are taking a lot of cues from how uh, China has grown, as I mentioned, particularly around commerce, around um, you know route to market, O to O, and like the, these sort of areas. I think you know. You know, India's always been a, a country that's very quick to, to pick up and very quick to accelerate. And, and I think you know, we, we've seen that, you know, that despite the inability to actually get people in an office and like, you know, and, and, and do any sort of real, um, let's say, formal learning or formal, like, you know, training in, in these areas, you know, it, it just picked up very, very fast. Out of necessity, I think, somewhat, but, you know, that, they, they've definitely taken a cue there. And I see that acceleration path very similar to what it looked like in China a couple of years ago. Um, I think the other thing with, with India, it's still a, um, um, we're still driven by certain um, tent poles. I mean, IPL is still like a massive driver of like, you know, of media, you know, and of consumption. Likewise, you know, you look at the holidays and the festivals, there are still like, you know, huge tent poles around, you know, these festivals in terms of not just spending but in terms of consumption in terms of how people behave in terms of like you know in terms of optimism as well so i sort of feel these you know that that india has that you know um and and i, and I think that's you know that that has helped massively this year i mean you know there's there's no one who isn't optimistic and don't worry ipl is coming back in september and then we've got the holidays and then everything you know you know it, it really feels like you know despite everything there is still like a, an air of optimism about you know the future how this will transpire and looking at the at this whole situation you know and please don't take this as a, as a broad thing but from a business perspective that that it's been a positive in terms of how it accelerates our, our thinking our our ability to to be creative i mean I, honestly i'm like i'm blown away by the work that we do in india and the creativity of like you know of of, of our people there it's always been a you know truly um yeah it's a creative media hub you know, and, and I say that because if you go to other, other um, sort of markets, other countries, uh, it's, 
you know, media is, is somewhat different, you know, and like, you know, certainly here in, in, in China, I would say it's far less creative. It's much more performance orientated, you know, some very heavy on data, like digital accountability, measurement, you know, performance. How much did I sell today? How much am I going to sell like, you know, later today? You know, and that is, you know, and that's how media is, has been built. So we're very, very strong in that area. Whereas if I look at India, the creativity, the storytelling that yeah. comes out of our teams in India is incredible. I mean, and leads the world genuinely. So, you know, in every adversity lies an opportunity. So what, according to you, will be the biggest opportunity for advertisers in media in the post-pandemic world? How do you see the media business evolve in the in next, I mean, in the new era, which would be post-pandemic? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think you can see um, how things have developed now around platforms, around communications, around um, um, the... The, the ability to um, target both very precisely, but also create stories around, around your messaging. I think the, uh, we have definitely embraced that already, but I see that acceleration. I mean, you know, I look at how we already do things in, in, in China and it's dominated by platforms. You know, it's dominated by how you have conversations in platforms, how you actually build an organic conversation in, in platforms. It's far less becomes around how much money can I spend? How much share of voice do I have? How much like, you know, GRPs can I get and how cheaply can I get them? That's, you know, that feels like that was a hundred years ago to me, honestly, it, like, because now it's very much around, you know, do I, am I talking to the right people in the right way on the right platform? Yeah. Am I giving them the environment? The, the stories that they can then go and share, that they can then talk about, that they can then like, you know, uh, interact with and, and, and grow for us. You know, and increasingly that move from this mass sort of public domain into more private domains, into like how people talk to each other about how like, you know, brands interact with people's lives in those, in those channels, in those platforms, in those domains, I think is you know, the future of communications and the future of like how, how brands will grow. So I think for us, you know, increasingly, you know, while storytelling is, is the output, there is so much data and there's so much, um, you know, analytics that has to go into understanding how that works, understanding really where your customers are, how, you know, how they will react to certain messaging and, and very much like, you know, uh, test and learn at, at like massive scale. You know, I mean, we work with a lot of like, um, you know, what would say traditional FMCGs, you know, and, not so long ago, there was a very clear sort of IMC process, which feel, felt very like, you know, modern, you know, you go into, you know, development, you build this, you build out storyboards, you go into like, da, da, da. and like this whole process would take months and months and months, right? And you'd end up with an advert, which probably looked pretty similar to an advert that, that you created two years ago, right? But now that just doesn't exist anymore. And, and that's not how consumers expect to see brands and how to interact with brands. Yeah, you know, so I, I feel that um, you know, the, you know, the this will continue to be the case. It will continue to accelerate. I think people will continue to expect to have experiences um, in the digital space. I think what will change once everyone comes out of the pandemic will be, you know, as mm -hmm. as doors open up, as retail opens up, you'll see a lot more integration of like the O2O, you know, in terms of what an experience online looks like relative to an experience in store you'll see far more investment into actual experience centers i think in, in in retail you know destination and experience and i think we're already seeing that in, in china the the interactivity um in, in store and and the expectation that retail isn't a, a singular channel that you know your experience like whatever brand you have you need to experience it physically digitally you know emotionally you know, corporately it's like, you know, it's so, so to me that, that, that interaction and that, um, that sort of like merging of, uh, of like the online world and offline world and, and how that comes together is, is the massive opportunity. Brands that do that better, brands that do that best, they're the brands that grow. And I think, you know, the agency partners that you pick will be the ones who are specialized in that area, who understand what a consumer journey looks like, you know, through a digital world, through a real world, you know, who understand that, who understand like, you know, how, you know, how to, you know, connect with people and how to influence them through that through that journey. Wave Baker did exceedingly well at Cannes uh, in 2019. 
So uh, how uh, aggressively are you participating this time and what are your expectations from the first digital uh, version of the awards? Yeah, um, yeah. so we did very well in 2019. I think that was, uh, that was led very much by um, uh, some uh, Huawei campaigns that, that drove um, excellent uh, results and, and performance in the, in the awards. Uh, I think this time around, you know, it's a it's <laughs> yeah, it's it's a new era in terms of how these things work. I mean, I'm going to admit that I've never been to Cannes, right? You know, so so I, I don't. Really? I, no, seriously, seriously. Um, it's um, so so I, I don't really know what what the physical experience is, other than obviously I see a lot of people, you know, on yachts drinking drinking fine wine. You know, not jealous at all, obviously. <laughs> um, but uh, so 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 to me, everything's always like being a little bit digital and a little bit removed. I think as we go into the, this, uh, this awards where, you know, we are, you know, for me, awards are a fantastic recognition of, of our people. And I want, I encourage them to um, take pride in what they've done. You know, if they, you know, and I would support them to do that. I don't think they're a be all and end all in terms of, in terms of what we do. I think, you know, I would rather have a, a very healthy business than a bunch of awards, you know, <laughs> like, you know, it, it's always like, you know, my mentality, if that's, if that's good and like, you know, awards, lovely, that's your cherry on top. And like, you know, and I'm very, very happy, but I think it's, um, you know, definitely, um, you know, it, it plays to India's strengths. I mean, I'll tell you like, uh, in, in our entries this year in, in, in Cannes for the, the total wave maker globally, uh, we have 25 entries and 13 of them are from India. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. I mean, as, you know, as, as, as I was saying, like the, the creativity, I mean, it obviously lends We have lends not seen it. many shortlists from India yet. Um, you know what? I need to... I'll, I'll have Let's to hope check. that we do in coming days. Yes, um, it's, it's due. So we'll... Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure we will have plenty of press releases with <laughs> around, around anything that we do. And, but, and, yeah. and uh, some silvers and golds. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And you'll be the first to know, of course. <laughs> Um, but it's, you know, it, it just goes to show, I mean, like, you know, this is our entire global network. Over half the awards are from India. Uh, um, and so, I'm, you know, I'm really, again, you can be nothing but like, you know, super proud of like, you know, the teams and, and the efforts, but you can see the, the work we're doing. And, and again, it goes back to that storytelling. It goes back to like, you know, the kind of clients that we work with who have that ambition to like, you know, to do new things, to push boundaries. Um, so obviously with, with Mondelez, we've, you know, the, the, the work has been outstanding and, and, and well documented, I think, you know, if you look at what we've done with Cadbury as well, it's, it's incredible. So, so I think, you know, that, you know, will, will um, uh, I hope, you know, bring, bring home a lot of um, heavy metal for our teams, uh, for our teams in, in, in India. But yeah, so uh, we are, you know, taking it seriously, but, you know, we, and, you know, generally, these these are the ones that we think globally have the very best chance of, of winning. And most of them are from India. It's fantastic, right? My best wishes to you. I really hope that uh, you come back. I mean, we'll be proud to burst. We'll feel great if India also wins some entries. So, you know, uh, coming back to the pandemic and the human side of it, you know, what... Uh, what did you do as an agency, you know, for your employees here in India and uh, globally and in your APAC region, but particularly in India, you know, in these last two months when we were we were really going through a very uh, difficult phase. So if you can talk of, you know, so some of the measures that the agency took for its employees. I mean, certainly it's, uh, yeah. as I say, there, there are, um, you know, there's probably two, two ways to, or two routes to answering. Firstly, you've got the, the direct support. You know, so some of the direct support I think is is around, you know, if, if you see um, what we've done around APAC and, and globally, at WPP level, at a group M level, at an agency level, it's, you know, I, I think there's been some fantastic, um, you know, um, fundraising events and like fundraising like initiatives, which is driven particularly when, when the need for uh, oxygen was, was at, at its highest. Like, how were we able to, like, you know, purchase and get these things into the country? You know, and I, and I think, you know, as you know, infrastructure wise, sometimes India is not the most easy to navigate when you're actually trying to deliver support from outside of, uh, of, of the country. So from that perspective, you know, I think as a group, um, we came together very, very quickly, you know, in, in terms of fundraising and, and trying to get things on the ground to our people directly. Um, I think then, you know, what uh, WPP Group M Wavemaker in, in India have 
uh, have done has been little short of miraculous. That uh, our, our, our talent and um, human resources teams have been absolutely phenomenal in, in doing everything they can to to find hospital beds for people, you know, to try and like, you know, to, to like, not just for people, but for, for, their, for their families and like, you know, really looking out for everybody that, that, that they can. I think there was a, you know, a very central sort of helpline, which anyone can like be in touch, not just from Wavemaker, but from our entire organization, you know, try and finding like, you know, open beds, trying to find oxygen, trying to find anything to like that we can connect people to. And I think we've done fantastically well there. I think, you know, the extension of um, like health insurance, to ensure that everyone was covered within our organization, I think was what was a, a major move as well. You know, necessary, but you know, you, you have to still do these things. And I, and I, and I feel that was, that was very much, you know, it, it was fast and it, it was genuine and it was authentic. And like, you know, and I think that to me is, you know, is the thing that comes through. Of course, like, you know, we've suffered tragedy like everybody has in India. I mean, everybody has suffered some tragedy, there is no doubt, you know, but, you, you know, the responses that I've seen from, you know, um, from our organization and, and from individuals has been little short of miraculous, I would say. So that, that's been, you know, um, on that side. I think on the other side, it's also um, understanding and, and demonstrating uh, empathy to, to people who, who, are, who are suffering. You know, work isn't the most important thing in your life. You know, your life, your family is the most important thing that is ever going to happen. Right? So deprioritizing, you know, what you do, like, you know, and just trying to give people some space to like deal with their, you know, very real suffering, very real problems, you know, and putting work aside, you know, while you have to do that and making sure that, you know, people sometimes don't realize that, that you can do that, you know, so I mean, I've been personally, and I know as an organization, a great place to say, prioritize yourself, self care and family care is far and away the most important thing. You know, like work can always wait and work will always be there. <laughs> That's it. So you do that first. And I, and I think that, that, you know, is maybe a, a softer measure, but I think equally important because I think it's important that people know that they can deprioritize what they do. Because I, I, I feel that sometimes that has to be explicitly said because people are, are very, you know, conscientious. People do, you know, apply themselves to their work. They do feel responsible, you know, is, is, important to tell people that sometimes you don't have to do that you know not now anyway <clears throat> Martin, thank you so much for speaking to us it was really really uh, i mean it, it didn't look like a, a zoom call i mean i felt that you know you we were having a conversation uh, in uh, in person so i really look forward to having you in india sometime soon once the travel restrictions are over and uh, again i want to thank you for this interview and your time Thanks. Thank you so much. Love it. Can't wait to come back to India.